everybody, how's it going? So glad to be here. Uh, thrilled to be invited. Share with you guys the C course, Developing Your Dentisting Core. I've had a really cool opportunity to do a number of these with awesome dental students and classes, residents like yours. Um, usually in the beginning, is there someone who set this up who wants me to make any announcements, who wants to jump on the screen? I can promote you to a panelist if you just let me know who you are in the chat. See, there's a ton of people here, which is great. Josephine, awesome, Josephine. So me doing this, like working without a dental assistant, I'm like pretty good at it, but I'm used to having my, being babied by my team. Okay, there's Josephine. I just get a nice picture like that as my like placeholder, Josephine, for, I'm going to allow you to talk. Wait, allow panels to start video. I think you can unmute yourself if you would like, Josephine. Awesome. How's it going? Hi, Dr. Goodman. Thank you so much for being here with us. I know you're really, really busy. <laughs> well, there's some good pandemic things because I just walked, I have Nacho headquarters. You guys are a visit. Philly is lucky. It's like in the building where I live. So I just walked down from bedtime to do this. So this is nice. <laughs> well, we're happy. A lot of us are just getting out of clinic and we're just getting our day going. So I just wanted to remind everyone that in order for you to receive credit for today, make sure that you stay for the entire webinar. And just a little bit about Dr. Goodman, if you guys haven't heard of him. Um, Dr. Goodman is a practicing general dentist and the managing partner of a group practice with two locations, along with his brother, Jeffrey, in Mercer County, New Jersey. Over the past 10 years, Dr. Goodman has acquired three dental practices and has transformed his father's general practice into a dental group that employs multiple general dentists, specialists, and over 20 team members in two locations. So after graduating from the University of Pennsylvania School of Dental Medicine in 2002, Dr. Goodman pursued additional training at Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. During his general practice residency and hospital fellowship at Albert Einstein Medical Center, Dr. Goodman had the fortunate opportunity to learn how to place and restore dental implants. Dr. Goodman is also known as Dr. Nacho, founder of the Dental Nachos Facebook group dedicated to helping dentists and teams increase their success, happiness, and most of all, have more fun dentisting. So without further uh, ado, Dr. Paul Goodman. Thanks so much, Josephine. Before you jump off, can you just, I say this, I'm 43 years old, exhausted, but enthusiastic dad, <laughs> Dr. Nacho. So maybe if you're in clinic, you have like eight patients, you remember them all, but tomorrow I'll be at my office and I'll actually walk into a room and forget why I walked in. So I need to orient my mind. So can you orient me with this group, this awesome group led by you, who are you guys, where are you located and where are you in the circle of dentisting life from your students to after school or D3s, D4s, who's everyone? you know, on this call. So we are from all over. We have D1s, D2s, D3s, D4s. This is the practice management committee of ASDA. So it's people that are really motivated about becoming future um, practice owners and wanting to know more. So we're really excited for this webinar. Cool, awesome. Thanks so much, Josephine. So one of the cool, so I, a couple of years ago, I went to um, Nebraska with Brandon Wrench invited me. Then I went to Portland, Paul Lamorio invited me for some ASDA keynotes. So I have a six and a two year old that live in my house, small human, some people call them children. And it would be probably difficult for me to fly around the country doing all this. So this is a great time to do this. So what this night is about you, uh, I'm gonna give a CE code at the end when I'm playing one of the videos, I'll put how to register in the chat and then I will uh, give the code at the end. But I really want you guys to think about this entire time is for you, right? I have so, much, so many on-demand C courses, YouTube lectures. You don't need me to be like a talking video Really what's best is if you ask me questions, draw out of me what you really want to know. Learn that one thing, ask that one thing. We're not even there in person. You don't have to raise your hand, just put it in the chat. So I want to orient everyone's mind that I'm going to play this video here. So I always like to, when you work on Zoom all the time, you do a lot of, usually someone will be reading this for me, but I have no problem reading myself. So developing your dentisting core to succeed in the real world. So I started something called the New Dentist Boost Camp a few years ago. Uh, with Greg Charles from Dental Clinical Pearls, I thought to really survive and thrive in the new, in the world of dentisting, not just as a new dentist at any age, is to work on your core. I was at the gym today and working on your core is important. So what is your dentist and core? 
It's your mind skills, your word skills, and your hand skills. At the center of your all is your heart, how you treat people, how you think about people, how you talk to people. Dental school often focuses too much on hand skills and ignores mind and word skills. And when you get out into the real world of dentisting, you find out that how you think through things and how you say things is important, especially your word skills. Because you don't want to end up like this guy too often. I end up like this sometimes. UDDS crying on the inside or outside part of your body. Everyone cries on the inside, even in a good day, maybe like six, seven times, but you want to reduce those numbers of times. So developing your dentist and core is what we're going to talk about. Uh, I will share the importance of connecting with patients as people first, as well as choosing the words you use carefully. Like bonding, communication systems can be created for you to use with your patients, team members, and even yourself. Everything that matters needs a system, and everything matters is one of my nacho sayings. Additionally, we'll address the challenges that overcome them in the world of practice transitions, finding a job, hiring an associate, as well as buying and selling a practice. So like my company, Dental Nachos, what I created, I was a number of toppings. Always have nachos on hand in case of emergency. Nachos have a lot of toppings. That's what makes them great. So I'm a broker. I'm a speaker. I'm a practicing dentist. I founded Dental Nachos. I'm a coach. All these different things. And that's what the real game of life is about. How to infuse all these different toppings into your day-to-day -day life, practice management, clinical, business, leadership, patient communication. So uh, the checklist manifesto, you guys just turn this off after this and say, I have enough, had enough of the nacho guy and you just bought this book and listen to it, it will change your life. It's a fantastic book. I have it near me at all times. I also have this other book called The E-Myth Revisit. If I was in dental school, these would be the two books that I would focus on listening to, reading, uh, when I walk around, work out, do, take a break from studying, the E-Myth Revisit and the Checklist Manifesto. Checklists are not 47 points. They're like three to eight things. So we want to talk about re developing repeatable word systems to streamline, streamline the challenging nature of patient communications, examine the current state of practice transitions, review simple strategies to increase pra practice revenue, the power of video. The theme, if you turn that off, turn this off right now, is to go out and BTL yourself. Bring to life yourself. Bring to life what is happening in your world. Patients inside the operatory, outside the operatory. We're going to see a great example of a BTL bring to life video here in just a second. Five minute practice management systems that eliminate confusion and explore how to incorporate larger treatment plans. So that sounds like a lot, right? Sounds like, oh man, how can we do that an hour? So when you learn, you want to learn in digestible bites, right? Just think about learning one or two things. You can learn more later. I'm going to give you guys resources, free resources to watch more of what we do, other things. Tonight is really about you guys asking me something that will help you sitting there, relaxing, learning, having fun, thinking this is my career. What can I do to make my career a little bit better? So I like to sh show the story. The story's the star. So this patient came in last week to my office, two weeks ago to my office. I saw him when I was 31 years old. So why did this person trust me to spend over $60,000 at 31 years old? Did I develop my dentist core perfectly then? No, we're always improving. But what did I know with my mind, my words, my hands, especially my heart? How did I set up my practice? I practiced with my dad for 11 years until he passed away, unfortunately, but he was an amazing dad, mentor, friend. I practiced with my brother. I love collaboration. Today, we had an in-house periodontist in my office. Doing perio is a phenomenal field. And if you're thinking about doing perio, outstanding, outstanding specialty. We have a, a multiple general dentist, a prosthodontist, dentist that focuses on sleep apnea. I love working as part of a team. So let's watch this video. And as you watch this video, I would love if you would share in the chat, right? So how you say things is everything. So you know when your instructor says, go back and do it again. This wax up stinks. You should give up. You want to cry, right? Those aren't nice things to say. It's how you say things. So if I say, write in the chat something I can help you with. It's fine, but it's not super nice. How about this? Will you help me deliver the best lecture to you by, as you watch this video, share, me, share with me one thing that would help you for life after dental school. One question you have, one concern you have. You have 60 minutes with me to ask me anything, big, small, large. I want to answer it because that's more important than anything on my agenda because I'm going to get to all these topics, but we could start now and talk for 10 hours. So what could we get to in the next hour? Let's watch this video together. And while we're watching this video, share with me in the chat. When you see a good example of a mind skill or a word skill or hand skills, or more importantly, share what will help you tonight. One thing, a concern for your life after dental school. So let's watch this together. Hey, dancing friends, it's Paul, Dr. Nacho. I'm here with one of my favorite patients and people that I've ever met in my entire life. We're gonna share a fun story of taking Rick 
from getting his teeth replaced years ago to where he is today. We're gonna to ask him some questions about the process. So first, Rick, I appreciate you being part of this video, helping Dennis learn, sharing stories. Uh, what? Tell us back in 2008, you came to this office, how did you get here? Well, I did a Google search, right? and uh, I thought, my teeth are getting so bad, I don't wanna be like my 80-year-old relatives that are going to the dentist every other week right. to have something repaired and fixed. I just want to be done with it, have a nice smile, and you were the one. Well, I appreciate that. And I still remember we had a great uh, marketing system then. I see the power of the internet where we would uh, record calls so we could learn from them. I remember hearing your call and saying, hey, I hope you guys can help me. I so right off the bat, I'll highlight when I see something you guys should be aware of. He said, I did a Google search. How was I found on Google? Because I invested 12 years ago. Remember, this is 2020. 2008 was different. I invested in a pay-per-click campaign. I invested in marketing to help patients like this meet us. So if I'd never done that, I would never have met this patient. So maybe I was investing $500 or $1,000 a month back in 2008. Maybe some of my friends said, you're wasting money on that, Paul. Maybe I said, that doesn't work. But it brought me this patient. And it's always about helping people. It starts, reverse engineer everything from the patient experience. If it doesn't help, it doesn't matter. But after that, you do need to make money where private businesses. So the more work you can do on fewer patients, the more productive you can be with patient-centered care. If you told a dentist they could produce $4,000 tomorrow, they might say, great, I'm, I'm ready for it. It's 20 class twos, they don't want that. How about you know $4,000 with three implant placements? That's a better way to produce $4,000 patient-centered production. But number one, mind and words. Does dental school teach you about marketing? Does dental school teach you about pay-per-click advertising? That's something you have to go and find. So I used my dentist core to even bring this patient into the office. This is even before, before we met. Hey, Dentsing Friends, it's Paul. Hey, I hope you guys can help me. I'll check you out online. So when you came in and you see a 31-year-old me, now I'm 43 years old, what were some of the things I did to make you feel like you could trust me, move forward. Because I was only 31 years old at the time. Did you know, think I was too young, you know? Oh, I was so happy that you were young because I figured, well, even when I'm really old, you're gonna oh, like still that. be around. Yeah. And uh, and you were so enthusiastic about the whole case and you know what we wanted to accomplish and, and you got what I wanted to do. Thanks, and what I like to share with my dental audience here is that you can make things fun. Instead of talking in dental school terms, like things have failed, you could say, hey, it's time for your teeth to retire and replace them. So we, back then, removed these teeth, preserved the bone. You were part of our team. You even got a chance to have some work done with my dad, with our awesome right. periodontist. We have a great lab that did this. Now, this is back in, we finished this case in 2012. Removed your teeth, put in, put in screw in all the time. Screw in, stay in all the time teeth. Patients don't care about dental terms at all, they care about how it impacts. So don't talk dentist weird to people. This is another part, the repeatable systems, talking to patients. Everything in this lecture is the same. Don't talk dentist weird. You wanna know dentist weird? Uh, did anyone here recently, uh, raise your hand in the chat, uh, have you referred to a tooth to another human being as a virgin? Have you called a tooth a virgin? Was that comfortable to a 75 year old woman on a Tuesday? Hey Millie, we can't do a bridge here. Your teeth on either side. They're virgins, okay, does that feel comfortable? When Millie goes, what about the ones in the back with the big silver fillings? I don't know, they're going out at night, getting bottle service, wait. I mean, th this is a weird way to talk to patients. So don't say, we can do a fixed hybrid overdenture prosthesis, weird. Say, we can do teeth, like I always am doing like these charades, we can do teeth that like screw in all the time, stay in all the time, or we can do teeth that snap in and out, you can clean them under the sink. Enthusiasm, he noted my enthusiasm. I'm just as enthusiastic as I was the day I met him. With patients, you, who here has seen the play, one of my favorite, Hamilton. Have you seen Hamilton? Have you seen, yeah, it's wonderful. Wonderful piece of entertainment. Lin Manuel is an international treasure. We should protect him at all times. We should pay to protect him. He's just an amazing person. Do you know when they do Hamilton, they do it over and over and over again, but they always have to pretend it's like the first time because people are there to see it. That's you. You're the star of a Broadway play that nobody wants to see at the dentist. So enthusiasm is important. When you, you, when you focus your enthusiasm on helping others and the cool things you do to get to help others, and cases like this don't come in all the time. I just want you to know, I've done a number of fillings in my career. Not once has someone like on a class one on number 18, have they got up from the chair and said, 
Thank you for your care and effort, Paul. No, they're, they're annoyed by that type of work. So full contact arts and crafts on patients that don't want to be there is a lot of general dentistry. So we can do some cool stuff, focus on how it changes people's lives. So we're only two minutes into this video. What did you learn? Will you use the power of video? Because I can use this video. I mean, does anyone out there um, in the chat, I feel like I'm going to get some... Uh, some people to say, do you have over like $200,000 in debt out there? Anyone over 200,000? Anyone over like 300,000, 400,000? So like, does anybody wanna make more money when they get out so they can pay their debt? That's totally cool, be proud of that. But you wanna do that with patient-centered care. So if you wanna make more money, be happier without working more hours, Dental implants is a big part of doing that. And outside of dental implants, getting patients to accept dental treatment with the words and your mind. Hand skills can be taught. Word skills and mind skills are things some dentists never get. So only two minutes into this video, look at the things you've learned. And um, Josephine, uh, you're the leader here. Uh, don't everyone type in the chat at once. I'm 43. I can't handle all these comments in the chat. There's way too many. Okay. So now we're two minutes in. This happened the other night with Toro. I know you got to get warmed up. So while you're watching it, remember, share one thing that you would like to learn tonight. One question, eight words or less, or share something you noticed about this video, or share something that I've said. At the end of this lecture, I'm going to ask you guys to share one thing, one thing you're going to go di do differently after this. So if you want to know how much associates make when they start, they want to know what a restrictive covenant is, if you want to know what C courses you should take, if you want to know how to not cry inside too often as a dental student, I can help with these things, but I cannot help unless you ask me these questions. So we now have four minutes left in this video. Let's keep watching. Good one. What would you recommend is the best way to get experience with implant training following C? Awesome. Uh, thanks for asking that. Thanks for breaking the ice. You did it. Okay. Thanks uh, to this person. I won't call people's name out in the chat. I'm not sure if you guys want me to or not, but the best thing to do after dental school is get experience with extraction of teeth. The best way to do that in my experience is with the GPR AGD. Learning to extract teeth and preserve bone is the best way to get started with implants. I do these treatment planning your life calls. I did one with a dental student the other day. They're super affordable. And he said, how do I learn to place implants right after dental school? If I don't do a GPR, if I do do a GPR, I said, either way, don't worry about placing implants at all for your first two years. Take out as many teeth as possible and preserve bone. How do I find enthusiasm on days when things aren't going my way? It's very, very difficult. You have to be that star of play. I remember the patients coming in for this experience with me. I know I might have 20 patients, 30 patients, 40 patients. And don't overjudge yourself. Just say the next, I'm going to do the, has anyone seen this movie? It's a very good movie. It's got a lot of good life advice. I watched it like 947 times. Frozen 2. We have a daily showing with my two-year-old on the weekends now. We used to be every day. Frozen 2. So in Frozen 2, Anna is having a lot of problems. And she sings this song, Do the Next Thing Right. So when things aren't going well, don't let the voice in your head saying, I stink. Everything's going bad. That's happened to me too. That's a normal way to live life, okay? Just say, take a deep breath and just say, I'm going to do the next thing right. I'm going to try the next best experience, whatever that may be. And it's very, very difficult. Anytime, get help from your community, whether it's a Facebook community, whether it's an in-person community, develop your network of people you can rely on. Just before this here, I have something called the Pandemic Text Team. And look at this. This is us four on this thread. We talk about all kinds of stuff. We're four practice owners, four friends. I love this Pandemic Text Team. We share videos. We share jokes. Get yourself an in-person core team. I know you can't always be in person now, but also get people outside of your box. Use the Facebook, Instagram community. Ask tough questions. Is someone going to be obnoxious out there on Facebook? Yeah, they are. 100% chance someone's going to be obnoxious. Blow past that anyway. It's just your feeling. So ask a good question, but ask thoroughly. Hey, if you were, if you were graduating from dental school now, with a, a, a specialist or say he's a GP, ask that question. Anytime you ask us on dental nachos, anyone gives you any problems, just tag me. I will come over and make sure that they don't, they're not TSD. TSD is that so dentist. Uh, it's the negative ways we're taught with the dental student hunger games and trying to help us get out of that. All right, let's keep going with this video here. Great questions, guys. Oh, I, I know. Great tips, Dr. Nacho. I appreciate your enthusiasm. What I wanted to do. I've seen her name like a gazillion times. She's awesome. All right, great. If you guys don't mind me saying your name, you can just say it. I just don't, I don't like to like, shout out when there's a lot of people. I just don't care about dental terms at all because they care about how it impacts them. So we talk about snap in and out teeth, you can clean under the sink, or stay in all the time screwing teeth. How's been your experience with having these screw with people? I forget that they're not the ones I was born with, except they feel better and they look way better. That's awesome, right? And I would imagine, because you're just uh, such a you know awesome person and you're outgoing, do people think these are just your regular teeth? I don't think anybody thinks anything 
different you unless I tell them teeth, right? I do. Now, a couple okay. things. So I know my dental people. Uh, we're an interesting people. Dental school teaches us to be an interesting way. So we've replaced regular teeth, natural teeth, with implant-supported teeth, traditionally called fixed hybrids. We did this in 2012. So we use different materials now, uh, but we have acrylic over a bar, which has been great. But one of the cool things about you that I don't have, and this awesome person taking the video have, you get what, uh, Rick? What do you have in, at home? You oh, know, an extra board. set. Oh yeah, an extra set. So we made Rick, an extra set of teeth. I don't have an extra set of teeth. Yeah. So if anything ever happens, always be planning ahead, dentist. If a tooth needs to be repaired, if acrylic fractures off, if there's a challenge, you have a whole extra set which you made at that time. Uh, does that make you feel more confident and secure? Oh, without a doubt, except I forget that they're not mine, so yeah. I don't even think, oh yeah, there's an extra yeah. set. So that's but it is good when you point out that I <laughs> that I do have one. And it goes. Now, some my dental people, I've done cases like this for years. We're going to do fixed implants, removable implants, stay all time. One of the things I want to give Rick so much credit for is he has a super nice car which he takes care of, and you take care of these two. So now talk to the patients for a minute. If someone was thinking, I'm not sure if I want to do a case like this, or is it worth the time and money, tell us, is it worth the time and money, and also how... So everything's the same. So I want to ask you guys a question. We'll talk about this tonight. I'll also, whatever we don't get to, I'll be glad to come back for part two. I literally walk out my door inside the same building, eight feet down, I'm here. But I want to ask you guys a question. If you have $300,000 in debt, even if you just want to have a nice life, and I tell you that you need to sell a lot of dentistry. You need to sell a lot of dentistry to be successful. You need to sell a lot of dentistry to be successful. Who's uncomfortable with that word and says, I don't like that word, sell a lot of dentistry. I don't like it, okay? I don't like it. Now just think, for those of you who raise your hand, share with me, this is one you can put in the chat. Q&A is put in the q and A. What makes you uncomfortable about sell? While you, tell me what, if you raise your hand and say, you don't like the word sell, Here's a magic thing, right? This is magic. I asked you guys an emotionally based question and I asked you to share and you raise your hand. I don't want to judge anyone. So when someone says, I hate my denture, I hate you, this stinks, you know what I say? I see where you're coming from. Tell me more about that. So those of you who said you don't like the word sell, because I said, you got to sell to be successful. You got to sell to be successful. Tell me why. Tell me more about that. What don't you like about? While you answer that, um, Josephine, I'm going to put in the chat the link to register for the CE. And everyone has to get this link, but you know, like half the class is going to forget it. So you're going to remember it. And then I'm going to give the code at the end. What don't you like about it? So <laughs> Here's the link. Got two computers here. It's a whole system. This link is important to copy and paste. It's where you're going to put the CE code into. Okay. So. What don't you like about cell? Do I have a tried and true pitch to help sell patients? Physicians don't have to sell patients on joint replacement. Interesting, I would have said the same thing in your position. If you think that physicians don't have to sell people on joint replacement, if I say you're a thousand percent wrong, it's kind of obnoxious. You are 100% not accurate. Because I am reading a book right now, I'm listening to it called The Cell is Human by Daniel Pink. Cell has gotten a terrible rap. Terrible. Physicians need to sell people in joint replacements all the time. You think that when a physician tells someone their knee it needs replacement, the 70-year-old's like, sure, no problem, doc, even when they don't have to pay for it? Do you know how crazy it is? Sell doesn't always mean people have to pay out of their own pocket. Cardiologists have to sell people to get stents. Now, I understand. Reminds me of a used car salesman. Seems pushy, but why does selling have to be pushy? So here's an example. If you guys were in Philadelphia, I have a really good example. Who thinks this would be pushy, unethical, a problem? And I might do this one day as a real experiment. Hundred of you come to Philadelphia for a CE course. I know it's gonna rain that day. Maybe you check the weather, maybe you don't. 20 of you bring umbrellas. I purchased 80 nacho umbrellas, colored nacho colored umbrellas. As you're about to leave the CE event, I have one of my team members stand there and the umbrellas cost me $10 to buy and I have them sell them for $20. If my team members offered all of you an umbrella as you pass, here, would you like to buy this umbrella? Who finds that to be unethical? Would anyone find that to be unethical if it was raining outside? Okay, tell me why you would find that unethical because they're selling you help. Now you can pass on by and get wet, right? You can get wet or you can buy an umbrella. If you do not embrace that you are selling help, 
you're gonna have a very difficult career. And some dentists have this. When I talked to this patient at 31 years old, I thought of an awesome opportunity to help this patient and give them options. If you ask for my tried and true sales pitch, which I call shares pitch, it's to talk like cars in this example. Hey, we can do, car, we can do a case that's like a Mercedes, do a case that's like a Volvo, do a case that's like a Honda. Good part about it, always good. All of them work and all of them you can drive just like those cars. But every one of those cars, you know, come with like different features, just like your implant cases. Which one sounds best for best to you? Now, for those of you, makes it seem like being a dentist is only about making money. You want to you want to know how you can prevent that? Just don't be a dentist that's only about making money. Just be a dentist that's about helping. But we're all private businesses. Dental school messes you up. You guys are zero to four years in. I have a two-year-old. I know how much influence that people have on, on anyone, zero to four years. And they should be talking about this day one, D one how to get treatment plan acceptance, how to vouch, share your value, how to share pros and cons, but they don't talk about it at all and they make it really weird. But dental schools, it's amazing. Uh, they do a really good job charging you guys for the money. Not much about telling you guys how to charge patients. Maybe you could be like, how did you get all of us to pay four to $600,000? Would you be able to tell us how to get patients to do this? Because if dental school believes in the value of paying $500,000, be proud of it. I'm proud of all of this. So if you want the secret, to the sales pitch, which is just the shares pitch. If you want the secret to, there's two secrets. One, don't care what people say. So I've given the same presentation I've given to Rick here. And people said, you're a used car salesman. I don't want that. I say, no problem. If you would like it one day, I'm here for you. I've had people like Rick changed his entire life. Exact same content. Some of you, when it's illegal to go out again and hang out, I used to do that when I was younger. Maybe people would say, the way you are dressed looks awesome. And then other people say, the way you are dressed is not appropriate for the outside. Same outfit, different people. Get over that different people are going to have, different people are going to have different reactions to the same content. The other thing that I do that people always say, do I sleep well at night? I don't know. I got six and a two-year-old. I'm running around all the time. I don't know what, I don't know what good sleep is. It doesn't bother me at all because I know this fact. I'm helping the patient more than they're helping me. So he pays $60,000 and gets to chew for the rest of his life. I get 60,000. Awesome. Sometimes I'm on the other side of that. I have a business coach now that I'm lucky to have been involved with. Maybe I pay, let's just say I pay this business coach $30,000 a year. I can never repay her. She has helped me more than I can ever pay with money. So sometimes you're on the receiving end of that. Sometimes you're on the giving end of that. Be proud of both. If it doesn't help, it doesn't matter. Live your life by that. Each thing I talk about from a night guard to a big case, it helps the patient. I don't it doesn't bother me to discuss fees. It doesn't, if I, I say this, I say $1,000 the same way as I say $100,000. This is one of the biggest problems that dental school, school does not make you aware of. To be successful, you need to move people forward. Okay, so I'm gonna use an example because I'm doing this right now. This is the magic moment here. So when I did this video, I knew I wanted to get a lot out of it. So I can have my team edit this part of the video. Let's watch this part, okay? And I said, what would you say to other patients who think it's expensive? Let's listen to what Rick says. What would you say to other patients who might think it's expensive? Because I could bring up this exact same video and play it. You take care of it. Oh, it's definitely worth the time and money. It's the best thing I ever did. Awesome. And really, I just brush them with an electric toothbrush and then water, use a water pick Perfect. and floss under them every day. So if I want to help as many human beings as possible, and I want to make as much money, without working more hours, that 20 seconds is it. Hey, Rick, what would you say to somebody who thought it was expensive or wasn't sure? Because I have those patients. And when those patients say, has anyone said, this is too expensive, I can't afford this, blah, 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 right? Your patients say, when people say that, say, a lot of people say that. That's a really good way to, a lot of people, if someone asks a good, ask you a question, like a weird question, this is one of my scripts. Uh, what's my insurance covers? Am I going to like make me communicate with them aliens? Am my implant going to fall out? That's a good question. A lot of people want to know that. That is a really good point. A lot of people feel like it's expensive. Rick felt that way first. Now let's watch what he has to say. So as soon as I remove myself from that interaction, this is the magic. I'm the dentist. Patient A is asking me about a Rick case and saying it's expensive. I say, look at this. You're going to see my monitor here in a second. I'll say, let's watch Rick. I remove myself. Now the patient is staring at the video and says, oh, that's somebody who's like me who wants to do it. Does everyone say yes? No. Do more people say yes? Yes. So I'm going to give you guys an example. Uh, when, you, when you believe in something, sometimes you can come over off as overly enthusiastic. 
So sometimes you want a patient to get a crown, get a tooth removed, and you come off as overly enthusiastic, which may be pushy. It's going to happen to all of us. It's happened to me. It's going to happen to you guys. So I'm going to give an example. Uh, who here would like to pay off their loans as fast as possible, be happy, and get the practice ownership as quickly as possible? All of you? Okay. So all of you have said, I have this problem. I have part of the solution. Here's a tip in life. Never offer the full solution. You're not going to solve every problem for everyone. I have part of your solution. So I'm just going to use Josephine because I know her and she's put her name out. Hey, Josephine, you said you want to pay off your loans faster, be happier, and get the practice ownership. One of the things that we do at Dental Nachos is the New Dentist Boost Camp. What the New Dentist Boost Camp is, is it's three days in Philadelphia where I bring in all different types of instructors. You learn about clinical stuff, business stuff, patient communication. We also hang out when that was legal. We have like a social event. You get to meet people your age. And I also bring in all these resources. So not just instructors, banks, things like that. That sound good? Yeah, it sounds good. Okay, it's $2,500, Josephine. So I have 10 spots for this every year. I've like done like five of them. I have 10 or 12 spots. Raise your hand if based on that, you're ready to give me your credit card for $2,500. Say, sounds good. Somebody, someone, I might be that type of person as a student. Is anyone ready? Okay, who's still not sure? You said you want to pay off your loans. I'm the one. You're still not sure, right? Because dental school makes you nuts. So you guys have me here as a trusted resource. I shared this. And then I told you, I have this program to help you do exactly what you want to do. So why aren't you guys ready to pay $2,500? Tell me, just like patients. Why, why don't you, you just pay? I just told you it's good. I told you you need it. You told me you need a crown, your tooth's broken. Why don't you want to pay? I, I, aren't I like, you don't trust me? Of course not. Because first, most consumers are like this. And dentist consumers, you're extra special crazy, right? You didn't sell yourself, right? I need to show this benefits you. Perfect. So I tell you, I'll tell you exactly like a Rick, Rick thing. People have taken this and they've been unsure about investing $2,500. And afterwards, they've been happy. What they've shared with me is that it made them feel more confident being a dentist. They started producing more dentistry. And best of all, they just became happier. Anyone else? Anyone ready for the $2,500? And if we were doing this for real, some of you who like weren't sure are ready to give the $2,500. But here it is. Here's the way to get anyone to move forward with momentum in the most fun and authentic way. So at least 20 of you want to pay your loans faster, get to practice ownership and not be miserable. Okay. Probably everybody. I've given you a solution. I've given you a treatment plan. Part of the solution, think broken tooth crown, but you're not so sure yet. You want to do it. I know you, you want to do this. Okay, we don't have any of these right now, by the way, because of the pandemic, but usually I would have one of these, right? So usually this would be a little more real. Here's the magic. Who would be comfortable with this? Okay, I know a lot of you guys are interested in this, but I know $2,500 is a big investment, especially for a dental student. Would it help you make a better decision? If I introduce you to someone who took it just like you, they took the boost camp and now they're happy. Who would like that person's Instagram to talk to them? Right. That's how I get it done. Because I remove myself from it because I'm not a new dentist. I'm not a 55 year old missing teeth. That's the magic. Get a testimonial. So then I give you Miles John. And I have plenty of people and I say, hey, Miles, this person was interested in boost camp. They're not sure. Tell them what you said. Tell them what your wife said. I'll give you someone else. But you want to know something why the human brain is so messed up? So a lot of you guys uh, said you wanted to talk to someone. We're going to call it Miles and Kate, right? Because they took it. So you said Miles and Kate and a text message. You guys all text, I text, right? If I gave 10 of you their numbers to text, less than half of you would text them, but most of you would sign up for the boost camp. Because once you confidently share that you're willing to introduce someone to someone who's used your services and have them share, it is an incredibly genuine, authentic, and confidence building thing. Can I be making these people up? Yes, but I can't make up a whole person to talk to if I say a five. So that's what I'm doing here in this video. So if I use this as a Facebook ad for my office, let's go back to Walter. You know when there's something under it, you can kind of feel it yeah. under there and it just doesn't feel so clean. So you get that water pick out and it's gone. And, and, and that's such a great way to put it. So you, yeah. you know, power wash it, you come in here and have our hygienist take right. care of it. I'm going to have my awesome video person show your x-ray. If you just show this x-ray for the video Those here. Crazy x -rays. Yeah, so, so we have uh, multiple implants. We have an extra bone-saving implant. I know what you're thinking, Dennis. Why is there an extra implant? You're also saying, why is this tooth up here? Because I know you're Dennis. 
that tooth is just sleeping. Maybe one day we'll need to remove it. Right now it's sleeping, it's not bothering anyone, but this is an example of implants that were placed over 10 years ago, restored with a fixed hybrid acrylic titanium bar from one of our awesome lab resources. We want to meet our lab resource you can. So you can come back to us for the end of this video. Thanks for also the other. So uh, before we wrap up, uh, uh, Rick, tell me, when you walked in this room, you said you spent a lot of time in this room. Back yeah, in I did. But now I you did. just come like twice a year, three times a year. Yeah. Um, so and it's, it's easy. Right, you set yourself up for success. And you just represent everything that's good about dentistry, everything that's good about people. I don't know if you know this about our job. Um, sometimes it can be fairly frustrating and annoying. <laughs> People don't want to be here. We're doing full contact arts and crafts. So my message to you is take videos just like this. Get your HIPAA consent form. Get the patient to share their story because you can share patient stories. To do three things. One, help other patients who are in analysis paralysis stage to move forward. Two, teach other dentists. And three, have more fun with your team, your you, yourself, increase profitability, increase production, and do the things why we went to dental school to help people just like Rick. So thanks so much for being part of this well, video. Thank you for giving me my smile back and they feel great. I'm so happy I did it. So before we wrap up, this has been such a great day. You're a big part of my day. I'm just gonna <laughs> tell my awesome off I'm leaving now because it's only gone well, right? So now we're not seeing any more patients. No bands flying across the room, nobody complaining. I'm done, it's like I'm leaving. So a couple of things here. The BTL video is everything, okay? Bring to life video. You're gonna make one for when you want a job, buy a practice, a, a job one, which is uh, tons of video on our Dental Notches YouTube site. Subscribe, but I'll do the job one quickly. Here, I, I, I'm very versatile as a speaker. So we're talking about Rick, now we're talking about you guys. Anyone here at D4 who wants to get a job next year or GPR AGD? Good, so you're lucky you're here, because you do this, okay? I do recommend a GPR AGD. So if you're going from GPR AGD or D4, do this. Make a 30 second video. Here's the video. Here's the video I would have made if I was finding a job in 2020, sent out. I'm gonna give you guys a couple prizes later. And one of them is gonna be a list of all the jobs that we have in our Nacho community, because finding a good job is not easy. And you may be competing against other people for a good job. So you need to stand out, differentiate yourself. Here's how you do it. Get phone, hold phone, have someone hold it. Great if you put in AirPods or lavalier mic is even better. Say this. Hi, my name is Dr. Paul Goodman. I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania School of Dental Medicine and the Albert Einstein GPR. I love living in Philadelphia. I'm looking for a job in Philadelphia, New York, and New Jersey. In addition to doing crowns, fillings, and night guards, I also like implant dentistry. I would love to get to know you. And if you are searching for an associate, I would love a chance to apply for your job, meet you. Reach out to me at paulatdentalnachos.com or call or text me at 267-896-1942. Here's the magic. Say contact twice at all times. So if I could, I would love to connect with you. Reach out to me at paulatdentalnachos.com or call or, or text 267-896-1942. That's my real phone number if anybody wants to text me. I have a text hotline that's slightly different. I, I do manage that text hotline. What I just said there. Uh, was my real phone number. Now, I'm not saying if you're if you're uncomfortable giving out your real phone number, don't do it. Just get one of those Google Voice things. Make a 30 second video, put it on YouTube. I have one of those examples because you're showing the show. Your the story is the star. So in this video here, which is basically everything we talked about here, repeatable systems for practice management, how to seem confident when talking to patients, business leadership, marketing. It's all in this six minute video. Always have a CTA in your video. Does anyone know what CTA stands for? Anyone know what CTA stands for? CTA, call to action. Right, awesome, Josephine. So call to action doesn't have to be money. So don't think about it as money. Maybe Josephine has an ASDA event. Not easy to get you people to do stuff. Not easy to get dentists. To, I can't even get dentists to show up for free stuff. Someone's like, why don't all the dentists get together and all drop insurances at the same time? I'm like, well, first of all, it's probably illegal. Second of all, I try to give a free C course. I can't get 100 people to show up on Zoom at the same time. So moving people forward with momentum, Daniel Pink, to sell is human, is not easy. So always have a call to action. Don't miss out on it. I gave it to you in the BTL video about, your, about yourself. If you to, I'd love to reach, I'd love to connect with you email me at paulatdentalnachos.com. I hope you sign up for our ASDA event. Visit ASDA backslash Nebraska.com. I hope you are interested in being part of our secret holiday shopping thing. Instagram me at secretholidayshoppingthing.com. Whatever it is, don't miss out on a CTA. Now, I did this video from my head. I do a lot with videos. You're not expecting you guys to do this practice, but there's 33 seconds left in this video. So this video here, could this one video, shares how to market things, shares how to talk to patients, shares about implants, 
helps other patients move forward by saying, you know what? You know who needs help? Dentists need help. And dentists, they really like free help. But I do want to give you guys an example. Here's a great example. If I told you I had a CE course on how to pay your loans faster, and 95% of the people who've taken the CE course have paid their loans faster. The, lo the course is called Lies, Loans, and Life After Dental School. There's two choices. Two choices. I want you to vote. This hopefully will change your life because this applies to dentistry. It applies to CE. It applies to anything you do. This is you. So I say at the end of this event, because Josephine's so awesome, I'm going to offer this C course, which is normally $50 for $5 or free. Okay. This course, 95% of the people have taken it and they paid off their loans faster. Raise your, this is A and B is free or $5. At the end of this, raise your hand if you want to be one of the people who get it for free. Raise your hand if you want to get it for free at the end. Okay. At the end of this, raise your hand if you want to be someone who pays $5 for this course. Raise your hand if you want to pay $5 for this course. Not even one, okay, couple. $5 people, I'm not sure why you did it. You can put it in the chat. You're the winners. And you're the winners of moving forward. Because here's why. I love free stuff too. But if you, yes, accountable. If you don't pay for it, you won't be accountable. It doesn't matter if it's a dollar or a hundred. So when you want to be accountable to something, pay for it. Now I give out all kinds of free stuff as lead products, as taste, as this. And some people use it, but I want to tell you a story. When I started Dental Nachos two years ago, I made a whole thing on associate dating webinar. Okay. I'm going to give you a code. You can get part of these things for free. I went to Temple AGD every, every month to teach these. Oh, sure. Yeah. I'll get, I'll get all these questions. Would you rather me just answer the Q and A, uh, Josephine? Cause I can just stop and do that. Oh, so there are some great questions in there. If we can just get to them before you have to leave, that would be great. Sure. And yeah. I don't have a hardest end time. So if we go a little over, it's okay. Cause there's okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, end time. Let me finish this one story about this. Cause it's very important. Temple AGD residents. They saw me every month. They love my lectures. I said to them, I made this whole thing. It was one of my first nacho videos. I said, I'm going to give it to these six residents for free in March, so they could use it for their job finding things. I said, here's the webinar, it's normally a hundred bucks. Here's a code, use the code guacamole, get it for free. All of them said they loved it. Last day of the lecture, six, six residents. I said, I'm gonna ask them who used it. Out of the six people, how many people do you think watched it for free? One. How many of you think people downloaded it? Three, two hadn't watched it. How many people you think forgot the code? The other three, zero accountability. So use this for patients. Don't do free dentistry, do discounted dentistry. You wanna give someone a discount, great. I've learned this the hard way. Free does not hold you accountable. So if you want someone to do something and you offer free dentistry, they often do not truly value free. Let's go through some of the questions here. Obviously dependent on the area, what is the average starting salary for a dentist? The average starting salary for a dentist is in the neighborhood of five to $600 a day. That's 120 to $140,000 a year. One of the challenges with our industry is that the debt has gone up while the starting salary has stayed the same. Why has the starting salary stayed the same? Decrease in insurance reimbursement is part of that. Uh, I'm not a, I don't know if the right word is economist, but there's 6,000 graduating dental students. And I heard there's like 4,000 retiring dentists. That means there might be too many dentists in a certain area. And I, I want to share this with you. Um, would any of you like to make $220,000 after school? You can. Here, you ready? Watch this. There, we have real jobs like this. You guys, whether you're D1, if you do one thing from this, I promise you it's going to really help someone's life. We have 40 plus job openings and we have at least 10 that are over $250,000 or at least 10 over this. So if you text the word job to 215-543-645 or you're going to get the whole list. You can just scroll through the whole list if you want. So $200,000 job. Here's the problem. It's in um, Fargo, North Dakota. Here's the challenge. It's in Erie, Pennsylvania. So jobs that pay well are often in geographic areas that aren't as popular. So when I talk about starting salary, I talk about most often areas that might be New York, Philadelphia, Texas, 
LA, if you are geographically flexible, you can make double the starting salary. But remember to protect your emotional self too. Because if you leave dental school or residency and go to a place where you don't have any friends or any support network to do a very stressful job, that can be very difficult. That's why you want to develop a team of advisors to help you along the way. But starting salary, it's say 120 to 140. What's the hardest part of opening up a practice? How do you know when the right time to open it up is? The hardest part of opening up a practice is very similar to the hardest part of being a parent. You can't just think about yourself anymore. So when you're an associate, you're an aunt or uncle of the practice. There's things that happen. If the toilet breaks, it's not your issue. When you open up a practice, you have to deal with a lot of questions and manage people and do dentistry. Preparing for that is important. There's no magical time to do it, but rarely do people say they, they open up a practice too late. Opening one up too early before you're ready to manage the people and the business part can be incredibly stressful on you. I highly encourage practice ownership I'm a practice owner. I help people buy practices. I sell practices. It's got to be at the right time in your life. I had a daughter. I'm 30, 43 years old. So I had a daughter when I was 36. It was the right time for me. Other people had kids when they were 24. It's a very, very similar thing, but you cannot return a practice or a child. So it's got to be something that you are very serious about and go to into prepare and aware. I don't think I have a good cost for the actual materials and cost of time for I sell something. I don't understand the background. Said, yeah, that makes total sense. It's very difficult to price dentistry. Ask people, learn, write things down. Um, if you look at a crown and your, your crown's $1,200 and the lab fee is $150 to $200, there's also the cost for the assistant, the materials, the rent, the overhead, general dental offices, can have between 60 to 70% overhead. So that is a critical part. Learning how to read a P&L is an important part of dentistry. These are things you wanna build on. So when you're in dental school and you're, I mean, here's an example. I'll give you guys, one of the things I'll offer you guys, I'm ha does anyone know who Dr. Mark Costas is? And Josephine, if you need any other speakers, I can connect you to him. He's awesome, he's one of my friends. Has anyone heard of Dr. Mark Costas along the way? Great, yeah, some of you guys. So, so him and I are very friendly. He's awesome. Uh, he runs Dental Success Network. So we are doing a course on Friday, November 13th. I'll give you guys a free pass to it about everything you didn't learn in dental school, but you should patient communication and business. And I love helping you guys. And I Instagram a lot. I try to Instagram. And if I, if this course was at night on a Thursday and you were a D2 and the course was seven to nine, but the next day you had a test, how many of you would watch the course from seven to nine and get a little bit worse grade on the test? Any of you? couple. How many of you would say, I'd love to watch the course, but I got to study for a test. I'd love to watch it by all of you. That's the thing I would tell you to change. It's so hard because I was a dental student too. But if you don't develop, I always have this weight around here. You don't develop your core and you just do bicep curls, you become lopsided. And I get how hard it is, but you have to be developing these muscles at the same time. Pace communication, business and dental school. And sometimes it may be getting a worse grade on a test. I don't mean failing a test, but I used to study for tests. I used to study 36 hours. I wish I went back and I read a book on communication for one of those hours and studied 35. Infuse outside dental school stuff into your day. Um, what advice do you have for finding an associate where the owner docs are willing to mentor versus ex expect you to do the routine bread and butter? Outstanding question. I'm working on hopefully being part of the solution to this. Mentoring in private practice is very easy. I will give you an example. This is the whole thing. Why I'm a big fan of a GPR AGD. So I mentor all the time in private practice, right? I am, uh, I have four associates. Someone asked about podcasts, don't even forget on that. Bulletproof practice is great. Dental practice, Dentalpreneur by Dr. Mark Costas, write that down. Ours is the dentalamigos.com. Shared practices, George Hariri, he's my friend. Shared practices, Dental Amigos is ours, dentalamigos.com. Dentalpreneur, those three podcasts are great. I'm going to give you an example. Who's gotten a haircut in the last six months? Raise your hand. Haircut, last six months, okay? Most of us. If you went to get your haircut and your normal, normal stylist, Jen, said, I can't see you today, but I have a mentee here, Kate. Kate is going to see you. Guy or girl, I like my hair, it doesn't matter. So I say, ah, I don't really wanna see Kate, but Jen, Jen, my main person said she was good. Okay, Kate, do my hair, right? So let's say Kate's cutting my hair and midway through, Kate says in her mind, this is not going as well as I had hoped. 
I don't know if the prep is right. I don't know if I took too much tooth off. I don't know if this is the way the implant crown impression fits. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go get Jen, ask her to come over to the chair and tell me if I'm cutting Paul's hair right. And Jen may even pick up the scissors and fix it up. And then at the end, Kate, Kate finishes. How many of you would never go back and see Kate again if that happened as your hairstylist? That's the part that stinks about debt mentoring in private practice. Medicine, we've had two children at Pennsylvania Hospital. It's a baby factory, oldest, oldest hospital. Freaking they traipse in residence. We had a midwife deliver one of our child. When you go to the hospital, the more the merrier. First year resident, second year. Dentistry, patients lose confidence. So mentoring in private practice inside the operatory is hard, not impossible. Outside's fine. You know, my, my associate comes to me, shows me an x-ray, the implant impression coping. It's not right. And I go, okay, that's not right. Go back in there and do this. But that's one of the challenges. The best thing with Ant, the five questions, if I can leave you, give you guys some value and I can say a little past eight o'clock, that's no problem. These are the five questions for every job. Where is the job? Why do you need, why do they, where's the job? Why do they need an associate? What procedures do they want me to do? How will I be paid? And what fun things are there to do in the area? Where, why, what, how, fun. Where, why, what, how, fun. If you just do one thing from this, you text job to 215-543-6454. Our Job Connect team is awesome. You get a list of all open jobs. And I think I just sent that somehow only to Josephine. So Josephine, you might have to copy and paste it. Here we go. Um, great questions about jobs. What advice you, uh, that, that was my, so, so my advice for finding associate, show how you can do patient communication, share how you can be a team player, talk about the things that you've done that might be not so ordinary for outside of dental school, join virtual Toastmasters, take practice management, see what you're doing here is great listen to podcasts, show when I love working with young dentists, but I know in my practice, if they don't have the confidence to talk to patients and then deliver the treatment, it's not going to be good for either of us. And they're going to have to just do basic stuff. Best thing to focus on as a general dentist after school is doing some of your own extractions and some of your own endo, some of your own extractions, some of your own endo. How do you put together an effective dental team? Excellent question. That's from taking practice management courses. Uh, hiring and firing is difficult. Uh, knowing yourself and your own personality type, developing your own leadership style. You, what happens in dental school is one of the things about dental school is you work with very, very, very motivated people because all of you are very, very motivated people. So even though you might not love your classmate, they're a motivated person. When you get into the real world of dentistry, you work with all different types of people from all different areas as the, one of the hardest things. Just to share with you, if there was a choice to go have margaritas with my team members or some random dentist, a lot of times I would choose my team members. But if I had to do a project with my team members or some random dentist, a lot of times the random dentist would be better choices because why? They went to high school, college, dental school. They listened to people. They had instructors. You guys have all been told by instructors, your work is not very good, go and fix it. So you become very coachable. Trying to learn how to coach people in private practice is a challenge, not impossible, but a challenge. When you say business coach, is that similar to a financial planner? And is that business coach a dental specific one? Would you recommend getting a business coach? One of the biggest problems with dental school, the dental student hunger games, dentist hunger games is you're not supposed to know everything. So I would get different coaches at different parts of your life. First of all, financial coach should be part of it the whole way through. If you want any of the ones that we work with, our sponsor of this, you can just email me at salsadentalnachos.com. Financial coach all the way through, but business coach, practice management coach, you might need one when you buy a practice that is different from when you buy a second practice. ABE, always be exploring so that you can find the right people. Don't be afraid of hiring someone, but then also don't blindly hire someone. How many of you are afraid of hiring a consultant and getting taken advantage of and wasting your money? I'm going to, oh yeah, that's dentist. It would make you afraid of everything, right? How about you do this? Ask for reviews. See who else has worked with them. Be normal about it. Don't not hire the personal trainer. Find out if this is a good one. Also, don't spend a ridiculous amount of money on anything right up front. When someone, there's, a, there's sad stories. Like, has anyone heard a story on Facebook? Because everyone likes talking about negative stuff, not nice stuff. Um, you know, I spent $50,000 on a consultant. It was a waste of money and they didn't do a good job, right? First of all, that's only one side of the story. Second of all, who told you to spend $50,000 right up front? 
Maybe you spend $5,000 and you do two months and see how it goes. See if you are accountable to it. Has anyone used a personal trainer or been to a group fitness class in their entire life? Has anyone been there? I have. Okay. Uh, does, is the personal trainer responsible for when you're eating pizza at 2 a.m.? Is that their fault? No, that's not their fault. Part of it is you. So accept your own accountability in the process. If they make you work out and get injured because they have you lift too heavy of a weight, that's a problem. But if they give you a good program and say, you know what, you can't have wine and pizza five nights a week, and then you go up wine and pizza five nights a week, that's not their issue. Really good questions here. Um, do I use the same template to present treatments, same outfit? I have a great, oh, if you want my um, treatment planning uh, menu, as well as our financial agreement, just text menu to 215-543-6454. I use a yellow financial form to discuss financial agreements. It's a great foundation of this. We had like a three hour webinar, or I'm sure I'm gonna talk about that at the, at the February, uh, Friday 13th event. Everything that matters needs a system, everything matters. Yes, I use the start to the same outfit for everything and customize it for each patient. But there's three ways to pay for stuff. Pay in full and get a discount, stretch it out over the course of treatment or use outside financing like care credit or compassionate finance. Three ways, care credit and compassionate finance. Our sponsors are nachos. They help people stretch out payments without me being the bank. Um, buy an option in the contract. Glad you asked that. Watch this. Never forget this, right? Watch this. I wish I could like, I do a lot with speaking. So one of the things you guys say is, oh, Paul, you're enthusiastic or you're engaging. One of it's how I vary my voice levels. It's not an accent that I do that. Many, do you guys have any, I'm not going to tell any of them, but like, do you have any instructors you watch on Zoom and are just like incredibly boring to follow? because they say the same tone all over again, because they don't know how to present. Knowing how to present is a whole thing. Watch, ready? So I'll say like, this is a golden nacho. Don't move this. So if I record this and I'm someone's watching this 10 years from now, even me, right? Like I love this comedian, Sebastian Maniscalco. He's one of my favorites, Sebastian Maniscalco, Jim Gaffigan. But even people you love, you can zone out. Your mind can zone out. But if they snap you back into it, you do this patience. This is a really important part. You don't want to forget it. If I was in dental school, I would love to have learned this. Now you're all lean forward. Buying into a dental practice is one of the riskiest and most rewarding things. If you're going to buy in and have a partnership, get a great team of advisors to be on your side because these go wrong often and they can ruin people's lives. If someone said to me, what's more ruinous to a person, a personal divorce or a practice breakup, practice breakup is it. Personal divorce, I don't know, you leave, someone moves to San Francisco, is drinking wine, the other person in New York City. You find a new person, no problem. You try to break up a financial agreement between partners, that is a real challenge. That's So a buy-in can be very risky. Um, I got it through all the Q&A, Josephine. You're welcome to come back on screen if you want. I definitely can stay for a little bit longer. Um, I want to make sure I give you guys some resources too. This, but I want, Josephine, you can come back on screen. We can do some more. I think there were some in the chat. Yeah, so I have those and it's only a couple, so. This was the menu for the treatment plan and the agreement for anyone wants it on the uh, text chain. If you get it, you wanna drop off the text, no problem, won't bother me. Uh, you'll be able to get a, a 60 minute course and the yellow finance agreement. All right, Josephine, we can do some more. Yeah, so we had some students asking, how has the incorporation of digital dentistry led to an increase in efficiency for you and your practice and dentists, um, for dentists in general? It's, um, it's, it's a really excellent question. And a couple things that you have to think about is, how, how has the introduction of online dating led more people to be married? I don't know if it actually has, but it's definitely given you more options for dating. So digital dentistry is a great tool we use it, well, our lab uses it for implant abutments. We have a CBCT, I don't have a scanner. One of the challenges, watch this, okay? Solo GP to me is an exhausting life. I think the solo GP model has been part of why we're here. I wanna ask you guys a question. Dental insurance company, let's call it Spoiled Guac PPO. Here's their founder, here's the dental insurance, Mr. Grumbly, okay? How, Mr. Grumbly paid $1,200 for a crown in 2015 to me. In 2020, they only pay a thousand. How did they reduce their rates? Like how did they reduce them and have the dentist accept it? Does anyone know? I just want to get the code for you. We're going to spend more time. I just want to make sure I get up usually. Someone give me an example. How can insurance companies pay less? Why do dentists take it? Feel free to say in the chat. 
Josephine, this is the code that goes with the link. So it's, I put in a couple times, that's what goes in to get your C credit. So the reason is all these dentists work by themselves. And when people work alone, you can have power of a lot of people working in caves. Okay. So they painted dentists into a corner. If dentists work together as groups, they wouldn't have been able to do this. So it's a real challenge for us as an industry with so many solo GPs. When you incorporate new technology though, it's often easier to do it if you're the only dentist in the office because only one person has to learn it. For us to get a scanner, we need like eight dentists to learn it. So digital dentistry is cool. Dentistry, it helps dentistry be more fun, email stuff to the lab, design things on this, but it doesn't necessarily make things more efficient. It doesn't necessarily make things more efficient. It's a great tool. I'm glad we have it, but don't get too worked up about having the latest technology all the time without knowing the basics. With implant dentistry, you have to be able to know to make a flap, suture, drill a hole, drill a post in a straight direction. CBCT helps for sure. Digital dentistry helps, but you still need the fundamentals to be able to do if you don't have access to that or know how to troubleshoot. Um, what are your thoughts on dental subscription services? I love those. I've been trying to build that. That's an in-house membership club. Anyone ever heard of this company, Costco or uh, Amazon? Has anyone heard of Amazon? Does, who's an Amazon Prime member? I'm one. So a lot of it's that. You pay 80 bucks a year to be able to get the one day shipping. That is a great way for, I'm trying to build our entire practice around in-house membership clubs. Trying to, to get out of insurance, it's not gonna be easy, and just work with people who wanna pay. That's not easier by the way, because some people wanna use insurance, but that's the model that I wanna build towards in the future. I love in-house membership clubs. Um, Bulletproof Dental Practice is great. Uh, I said about dentalamigos.com is ours, dentalpreneur, um, shared practices. Key things to have on your resume, I think bring to life your people stuff. Doesn't always have to be volunteer, it could just be shadowing dentists, being a restaurant server, going to CE courses, uh, making a portfolio on PowerPoint or Keynote of your cases that share the story too. That's a really good point. Show a few cases, but don't show them in some weird dental school way where it's like 52 year old female presents. Nobody wants that. This person with two kids needed teeth for a wedding. There's a story. Talk about that. Does having kids make it hard to be a practice owner? Um, yes or no, yes. But most practice owners have children. I will, I coach a lot of dentists with this circle of dentisting life, treatment planning your hopes and dreams. Um, one of the things I wanna make sure you guys get is the prize. If you tech, that text menu code, if you text prize to that, you'll get a $97 prize to Dental Nachos. You can use that to buy some practice management CE. Um, but I, I coach a lot of female dentists the easiest time to open up a practice, if you can decide, is kind of like way before you have kids or after they're six years old. Doesn't mean don't do it if you have a two-year-old. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the easiest time is way before you have kids so you get the practice set or after they're six years old. Zero to six, I got two of those in my house. A lot of effort on those children during that time. Um, Josephine, did I miss anything else? Kids? One question that was asked, which is a question I struggle with myself. Um, so if a GPR AGD route isn't clear to you yet, what's a great way to be more prepared, especially for those of us going through COVID right now? What's a good way to get good, to get fast, um, right out of dental school? Are there any courses that you recommend? Uh, I mean, anything that has hands-on components, like one of the, our sponsor curious is Carl Croner, does hands-on extraction components. One of the challenges is you can have a great experience going to another country and taking out teeth or doing implants, doing courses, even our courses. It's just that the in-game part on patients can be challenging. So I don't know if there's opportunities to work in areas where patients have lower customer service expectations, working in a jail, working in a public health clinic where that the GPR AGD experience is all about patients knowing it's gonna take a while, someone's gonna come over and help. So any experience like that, any experience like, like honestly, I can't get stronger unless I do reps with this weight. I can learn about it. Gary V is one of my favorite people to watch, Gary Vaynerchuk, I was on a show. You can't get better with push-ups by reading about push-ups. So I recommend you read about push-ups, you listen, push listen about push-ups, you watch videos and podcasts, 
But at some point you have to go to a push-up gym. So looking to find that, whether it's traveling overseas, whether it's working in a some sort of dental setting where patients don't have the customer service expectation and are just they, glad, be, they're just glad to be there to get the work. Do you think working in corporate dentistry is good for building your skills and transitioning to private practice? Uh, so one of the things, I'm a very equal opportunity helper. So I will help find dentists for DSOs. Sometimes they pay me, sometimes they do it as part of something else. I do it to help the dentist. One of the challenges is this past weekend, we had five kids in our house, three of my sisters, two of my own. So I had five children under 10 years old. If you had to watch all those children for a whole weekend by yourself, how many of you would freak out? Because in dental school, I would freak out. Five children under 10 years old for the whole weekend, right? I mean, you don't know my two-year-old, if you don't put on the right Paw Patrol, it's over. It's, it's totally over. Meltdown city. Sometimes working for a DSO by yourself is a problem. So ask this question. Will I be the only dentist in the office? The answer is yes. You have to really be confident in certain things because who are you going to ask for help? And help doesn't mean getting a root tip out. Help might be like, Mrs. Smith is furious. We thought we were going to do a crown. Now she's furious. Who can help? So working for a DSO can be a good opportunity. Look into jobs carefully. Always make sure you have a dental focused attorney review your contract. Please do not sign a contract without a dental focused attorney reviewing it. Don't be dentist cheap. It's 700 bucks, a thousand bucks. Either the attorney says, this is a great contract. Let's tweak these two things. And if it's, if we can't sign it, or they say there's 14 red flags before I got to page two. One of the biggest mistakes young dentists make is either being unaware or cheap and not having an attorney review a contract then wanting to get out of the contract and having a problem. You want a real world story? I love Dennis Job Connect. I'm truly trying to build an online dating version of this for the dental community. I'm very passionate about it. It's hard. So one of the people that I had featured on our Dennis Job Connect platform, who would like this job? 36 year old female practice owner with two young kids built one practice to a million dollars. This practice owner bought another practice for $500,000. And this female practice owner will teach you ortho, has young kids, so needs help. And you will work in that practice, the satellite practice, building it together with her. And if you like it, she'll even give you a potential to buy into that practice. Who thinks that sounds good? During the time, make $150,000. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. It's also in like King of Prussia area of Philadelphia, like 40 minutes from, from Center City. So somebody wants to work with her. Four years out of dental school, work for a group, really good dentist can place some implants, wants to go work there. Problem, this dentist signed a contract that requires him to give six months notice before he leaves. Do you think a dental focus attorney would have let him sign that contract if he had had it reviewed? So a dental focus attorney would be like, bup, 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 huge problem here. This six months should be 60 days. So that person, I think it's gonna work out okay, I think could lose out on a huge opportunity by not having a dental focus attorney review the contract first. Two reasons, cheap or unaware. Don't be cheap, don't be unaware. Meet those people in your dentisting neighborhood. Um, let's see here. Josephine, did I miss any other questions? No, I think that covered pretty much everything. And we're so excited. I actually saw the insurance webinar with Dr. Stephanie Mapp. Oh, she's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that was great. So we're excited to extend that out to you guys. Um, we're so happy that Dr. Goodman can join us, you know, just a couple of dental students um, <laughs> after a long day. So we really appreciate it. Oh, I love doing this. this is, I, it's always about the impact I have this year. I know that you guys and I said something tonight that's going to change your guys' lives. Do that for someone else when you're in that position. It's just you sharing your knowledge. Um, the last thing I'll put in here is on November 13th, which is World Kindness Day, Mark Costas and I are giving a co-three-hour presentation on communication, business, leadership. It's going to be awesome. It's totally free to watch in. Uh, you just text Amanda to 215-543-6454, and you'll get a free watch and pass. If you're in clinic, if you're somebody that, there's a way to purchase the recordings for a really inexpensive price. But to me, that's a great next step to explore this. So do podcasts, watch videos, challenge yourself, uh, reach out to me if I can help in any way. It can be sometimes be a, dentistry can sometimes be a lonely profession, even when you're surrounded by people all the time. So I don't want you to feel that way. So whether it's dental notches or me, I want you to feel like you're part of a community. So thanks so much, guys. I'll leave the chat up for a few minutes. 
and then head back uh, to watch Schitt's Creek. I was also watching Schitt's Creek. It's a good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thanks, 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 Josephine. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Doc. <laughs> um, so, Dr. Goodman will probably. Uh, oh, okay. No, I just wanted to get a list of the attendants so that we can do a raffle for gift cards. So. Oh, cool. I'll leave it on. Sure. That sounds great. <laughs> okay. Thank you. As Paul Dr. Nacho Goodman a dentist, a husband, a dad, a Dr. Nacho, is to speak with and share with dentisting humans. And if there was one thing I could share with all dentisting humans, this would be it. Winning in dentistry and in life is not everything. It is the only thing. Winning in dentistry and in life is not everything, it is the only thing. But what is winning? Winning is not making the most money, having the fanciest practice. It's definitely not creating the most beautiful emergence profile the world has ever seen. While that's important, that's not winning. Winning is how you feel about yourself. Winning is how you make others feel. Winning is spreading more kindness in this world, especially in our dental world. Jewel put it best. In the end, only kindness matters. Let me update that for dentistry. In the end, only kindness matters and the Krebs cycle. We can't forget about the Krebs cycle. It was very important to memorize it 18 times and forget it all 18 times. But what I wanna share with you as someone who's been a dentist for 18 years, which is a difficult job, and someone who's been a human being for 43 years, which is an even more difficult job, is that many awesome things will happen to you as a dentist and a human being. Many annoying things will happen to you. And sometimes, just as they have for me, many awful things have happened. It is the nacho plate of our lives. How we react, how we cope, how we respond is everything. That's winning. There's no contest. There's no score. The only score is your own happiness. Don't let the people around you dictate your happiness score. It's about you. And sometimes you think, I'll be happy later. Don't put your happiness on layaway. Many of you don't even know what layaway is. That was when you bought something and you paid a little bit for it and you would get it later. Don't let that happen to your happiness. There's always the chance to embrace happiness in small, medium, and large ways. Many of you don't have any money. And even worse than that, you're in hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. You can still be happy because you can make a difference. You can make a difference in your own life and the lives of others. You can still have fun. I wanna share with you a secret. Money does not make you happy. It's important to work towards financial stability. That's important as a dentist and a human being. But don't think when I'm out of debt, I'll be happy. When I buy a practice, I'll be happy because along the way, you're gonna miss out on some of the best things in life. You're gonna miss out on the human experience. When people ask you for help, help them. When you need help, ask for help. Look for ways to build people up, not tear them down. Life is tough enough for all of us. Even people who look like they have it all together have challenging lives. Do not put your happiness on layaway. Make a difference in the lives of those around you in small, medium, and large ways. Ask someone to help you when you need it. Be that person who gives helps and asks for help. Make it normal. End the dental student and dentist hunger games and look to bond together, to use a dental term, look to bond together with your dentisting colleagues at every age and stage. Kindness can be cool. Making people feel good can be cool. There's no reason things have to be in a way where we feel insecure, unhappy, worried, concerned. There's plenty of things in life to be concerned about and you wanna be prepared and you wanna be aware and you wanna create a treatment plan for your life to make your life successful, whether that's buying a three-op practice or a 30-op practice. 
because I want to share with you. If you work hard enough, your dreams, they won't necessarily come true because my dream was to dunk a basketball in the NBA. But that dream has not come true. But my life, it's been pretty awesome. It's been pretty annoying. And sometimes things have happened that have made it pretty awful. And I've learned along the way that we need to embrace the moments of good stuff, of kindness, of time where we can say to the people in our lives, thanks for being there. I'm glad you were there for me. I wanna be there for you. So if there's one thing you remember about me, about dental nachos, about dentisting, it's this. Winning is not everything. It's not, it is the only thing. Winning is not everything, it is the only thing. We just need a new definition of winning. And if I can help you in any way along your journey, do not hesitate to reach out to me. You can do so by emailing me at salsa at dentalnachos.com. You can visit dentalnachos.com or you can text our hotline 215-543-6454. You might not need help today. You might need help tomorrow. You might want to share something. You might want to make me aware of them. I may need help from you. That's how this crazy, wacky world works. The more we care, the more we share, the better dentisting world we can build together.